in a perfect world, I had hoped for a boy <laughs> and envisioned that we would call up my mum and his mum and say, you know, the baby's arrived and his name is Oliver John and he's six pound three like his sister and just perfect. We never, never expected in a million years that especially someone of my age would experience something as traumatic as a premature baby. Until actually hearing and seeing Oliver breathe, cry, move, that took away the fright, but before that it was definitely the, one of the scariest stages of my life. Holly was born at 28 weeks and three days, so she's just three weeks old now. She was a very much planned for baby. She's three, three years in the making. <laughs> So we're very, very happy to have her with us. Uh, we're going through IVF to, to obviously bring Holly into the world and uh, we weren't successful in Sydney but have been successful down here in Melbourne, which is great. It's difficult being here with her in the crib and not being able to take her home and spend time with her, but life's changed already and uh, that's a good thing. So my story goes that obviously found out I was pregnant with Oliver and I all of a sudden became really unwell. I had a constant pain in my right side and so just as a routine check, they checked on the baby and we found out that I was, um, I had a, what is called a shortened cervix. I had no idea that you could even have a shortened cervix. But then they said to me, no, you're not going anywhere until this baby is born. There is a chance you're going to labour right now. And I think my heart just stopped. I didn't know what to think. The biggest worry is that I suppose what's what's going to happen, what's going to be wrong, what could go wrong, is our baby going to be healthy. You get told all the complications that could possibly go wrong with your baby. Obviously you get told the percentages that they could go right, but you definitely focus towards what could go wrong. Our first goal was to get to 24 weeks and then it was to get to 25 weeks and the chance of survival went up so incredibly each week each day but each week was just a huge jump and I knew that getting to 28 weeks meant that he had an 80% chance of surviving with no issues. I was admitted to hospital three weeks before she was born um, for monitoring and the goal at that point was to keep her in the womb for at least a, three more weeks. We wanted to get her to 28 weeks. We knew that 28 week magic number that everybody kept putting forward was what we're trying to get to but 25, 26, 27 week was a I guess a, a shock for me to understand what was going on or what potentially could go on um, and try to get in my mind that, you know, we need to get to that 28 because, yeah, I don't want to have to face anything before it, so. There are so many of these babies born each year now, um, something like 270,000 babies born each year, and these babies are born in a type of grey zone. In a way, these babies are sort of not adapted uh, to live on their own yet. They're a bit like a fish out of water. A lot's happened in the last 60 years to help preterm babies. So babies have gone from sort of, uh, you know, surviving at 32 weeks to now being able to survive to 25 weeks. Out of that 270,000 babies, possibly 70% don't make it to go home. The day we got to take Oliver home was so special because it was the 12th of October, which is my mum's birthday. I bought Oliver this little t-shirt that said I graduated NICU and I put it on him and packed up all his stuff and mum's going, what are you doing? I said, oh, he's coming home. <laughs> and she almost burst into tears. She was so excited. Babies, um, particularly before they turn 34 weeks, are not good at remembering to breathe. They become apneic. They stop breathing and when they stop breathing, their oxygen levels drop and that has implications for their developing brain. Their skin is fine. Uh, it's leaky, it's not a good barrier against infection. The lungs are immature, they're not fully formed, they don't have the substance that keeps them expanded uh, when they're trying to breathe. Their little chest walls are, are still floppy. So everything about them, their livers, their kidneys, all immature and all not quite ready to work at full capacity. Well, the physical differences between, say, a, a baby born at term and a baby born at, say, 24 weeks is certainly their weight. Uh, and their development. So a baby born at term is going to be around three kilograms, uh, whereas a baby born at 24 weeks is going to be less than a kilogram. 
I've known uh, friends who've had a 28 week old baby but I would never saw him at that size or that age and so I had no concept of how truly small a 28 week old baby is and that, that's quite confronting as well. She's so small and delicate and fragile. For term babies the, the risk uh, of having a, a baby with major problems is around 3%. For babies under 28 weeks, that's about three times as high. So about 10% of our babies have a major problem with their brain development. Cerebral palsy is another uh, problem faced at, at increased risk by these babies. And we're still seeing some babies come through with major hearing and visual problems. From my conversations with people, a lot of people don't really know that babies can fall into this, this area, the grey zone. And so we need to raise awareness so that people understand that there is a lot of babies not making it. And the next step is to really use that awareness to try and create something for these babies that can help them. What I'm proposing, and, uh, and a number of scientists and engineers and doctors, uh, are also proposing that we create some sort of device that can return these infants to a womb-like environment where they gain oxygen and remove waste through the umbilical cord and they are housed in a liquid environment, which is what they're adapted for. And so all they have to do is really just concentrating on growing. It almost seems obvious that if you've got a child that needs to be in that state for longer to improve its chances of living and you can't keep it in that state, why not replicate it? I don't see why it hasn't been done already, to be honest. Let Them Grow is an organisation with the prime aim of helping these babies. It's raising awareness, it's raising funding for preterm baby research. A lot of people have been affected by preterm birth in one way or another be it a family member, be it some relation, a friend. So I want to reach those people and, and hopefully uh, by reaching those people they, they may consider helping this campaign. Look I think in, in 10 or 20 years time we'll look back on what we do today as being fairly crude. The way we support babies' lungs, the way we support their nutrition, the concept of an artificial placenta has been around for some decades now but perhaps in the long term this is where we will be heading in our treatment of these tiniest babies.